Colorado closed out its first spring ball under Carl Drell on Friday morning in Folsom Field. Brian, I feel like our uh, post showcase analysis video might be shorter than the actual preview just because, uh, you know, th there were some plays made out there. Don't get me wrong. We'll get into all of that. But more than 25 scholarship players out of the mix and just 67 total plays. Not Again, we, we knew going in this was for the diehards, and it certainly lived up to that billing. Yeah, I, I know it took longer for me to put that video together yesterday than it, than it did for them to do the scrimmage today. Uh, but yeah, it was it was definitely uh, you know for the diehards. I mean, uh, if you if you were we said this beforehand, but if you were looking for you know a real preview of the the twenty twenty one buffs, this was not really it. I mean, there's uh, there were some guys obviously that uh, we saw that are going to be on the field a lot, like Fonte Chenault, Dimitri Stanley, you know Christian Gonzalez, you know guys like that. But there were a lot of guys we saw that frankly um, aren't going to be on the field, and uh, it was just good to get get some reps and uh, get out of spring mostly healthy. Uh, you know, we think. I think Dimitri Stanley's probably okay after the, the hit he took. He looked okay as he walked off. But, um, you know, I, th I think you're right. This is for the diehards a lot, and uh, a lot of guys got some valuable reps, though. Gorgeous morning in Boulder. It was great to be able to get in there. Uh, in a cool moment before they actually started the scrimmage with Curtis Appleton and Matt Lynch getting placed on scholarship, they put it up on the big board and, and surprised those guys. And, they got mobbed by their teammates. The, whenever a walk-on gets awarded a scholarship, it, it, it's such a cool moment. And Curtis Appleton, he's a junior. So if he exhausts his eligibility, that, that's two years of being on scholarship. Yeah, that's great for those guys. And, you know, Matt Lynch obviously, you know, was on scholarship his whole time at UCLA. So um, winds up only having one year, uh, you know, he's got to pay his own way. Uh, but, you know, both guys that were, um, you know, as Carl Durrell said, integral parts uh, of the team last year. And uh, I think it says a lot about um, how they view their roles going forward. I mean, uh, it's one thing to be, you know, somewhat of key guys last year, but put them on scholarship going forward means that, um, you know, Carl Durrell sees them as being guys that they're going to be relied upon in some way going forward. It was, yeah, two walk-ons getting awarded a scholarship and then the, the scrimmage starts and it, instead of a spring showcase at times, it felt like a walk-on showcase, you know, Grant yeah. Cicerone, he engineers the force, the, the first touchdown drive, Charlie offered all an early enrollee in-state yeah. kid had, had a nice little rushing touchdown. Um, uh, Walk-on kickers Evan Price and Mac Willis made uh, both made a field goal. That's you know that accounted for two of the five scores on Friday. And then walk-on Steel Dubar uh, had to look at the the roster. I'll admit that when I saw that play, <laughs> but he had the biggest hit of the scrimmage. He really blew up Chris Carpenter on a little screen pass, and he had a little flex afterwards. So uh, it, it's cool. Those guys work their tails off. They don't get a whole lot, you know, it's great that they finally get food. You know, it was back in the day, they didn't get, any, they had to pay for every, even food. Yeah. So it's cool. They at least get that. And then, you know, they get uh, a chance to show out in front of a thousand or, or so folks there at Folsom Field. Yeah. So in a lot of ways, it was a bit of a walk on day, but you're right. Uh, I think Steele did have, um, you know, the defensive play of the game or defensive play of the day. Um, that was a pretty good hit by him. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see him in the fall, but uh, yeah, good moments for those guys. And uh, you know, it is good that those guys uh, get um, some things they didn't have in the past, you know, some of the gear and some of the food and things like that, that um, it's only been a few years. I mean, what was it? four or five. I mean, it was under Mike McIntyre. I know that that yeah. changed. So it's been within the last four or five years. Overall, it felt like the defense again, outshined the offense. There were 11 series, I believe, and, and only three touchdowns in that. And two of those three touchdowns, again, were by the, the threes out there. Um, felt like Van Dees name was being, Jonathan Van Dees name was being brought up every other play in the press box. I'm surprised they only credited him with five tackles, but uh, you know, th there were, it's still room for improvement there, but, you know, I was kind of joking. The parting of the Red Sea is what we saw at times when Nate Lamma was out. We didn't see that today. No, we didn't. Uh, we didn't see that today. The defense had a pretty good game, uh, although it should be noted that uh, there might have been some other touchdowns when, I mean, a couple of those drives, like the first one, you know, Brendan Lewis completes a first down pass, uh, you know, to the, to the other end of the defensive 40 or whatever it was. And, Darrell stops the drive and they push it back. So uh, those first couple of drives, the, the quarterbacks, uh, Lewis and Shroud did engineer first down plays, but 
Darrell as part of the script stop the drive and then they push it back. So who knows what they would have scored, but uh, the defense did have, have its moments. And um, I think it continued the theme that we saw in the three practices we wound up seeing Adam, that the defense was the better side of the ball. We did a pretty good job with our picks for guys to watch during the spring showcase. Montana Lom- Lamonius Craig had three catches. Jaylee Stacks had a touchdown. I believe Joshka Gustav was one of your picks. He had a couple sacks. One of those I, I think was a little bit of gift, but uh, his development has been fun to watch. I think one of us picked – did you pick Caleb Fourier? I did, yep. Yeah, he had a couple of nice catches, a nice spin move on one of those. And every time he gets the ball, you just kind of see that, uh, you know, his potential. Um, I think you had a shot Clayton as well. He had a nice run. Robert Barnes was flying around out there. Arias had a catch. Uh, just what, what were your overall takeaways from, from, you know, some of those guys? Yeah, I thought, you know, a lot of the guys that uh, you and I named, they showed out. I mean, one of them that we had was Naeem Rodman. And, you know, I don't remember his name a whole lot today, but he's had a really good spring. So I don't really worry about what he did today. Tape, right? Right. Well, and you even said that in the preview. Like, that's one that we'll have to go back and look at uh, just because those defensive linemen aren't going to make a ton of plays. I know he was in on a couple, but um, I thought those guys, those, the reason why we picked those guys is because we've heard their names a lot throughout the spring. And so, uh, you know, it's not surprising we heard those guys' names today. Maybe one guy that we, didn't mention, but maybe should have, was Keith Miller, you know, who looked really good today. Um, he was one of the better receivers out there. But um, I think those guys look good. I mean, there wasn't a ton of great plays by the running backs, but Ashad Clayton had a really nice run. Um, Alex Fontenot um, didn't exactly show what he did that second scrimmage we were able to see. But, again, I'm, I don't worry about Alex Fontenot. I think he'll be just fine. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the, the quarterbacks, you know, they had 28 pass attempts between them, no interceptions, so that's a positive. We, we didn't see them throw the ball downfield like we did the previous spring game when, when yeah. Sam Neuer really showed out. Uh, but JT Shroud did have that nice play where he was rolling to his left right before the pressure got to him. He found a wide open Alec Pell in the end zone. Brennan Lewis was eight of nine passing, had a 10 yard run. So um, I would give them, you know, probably a B minus in terms of just, you know, how they look today. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I think, I mean, the one incompletion that Brennan Lewis threw was that play to Dimitri Stanley where, um, you know, he got slammed into the wall and was injured. And, uh, you know, I haven't gone back and watched. Um, if you watch that on replay, that was really close. I mean, Dimitri might have been in, I'm not sure, but um, it was really close. So I thought Brennan looked really good. Of the three practices we saw, this to me was by far the best that Brennan Lewis has looked. Um, I thought he was uh, the better quarterback today. I mean, even though it's Trout through the touchdown, um, I thought that Lewis looked really good as a runner, also as a thrower. He was pretty sharp. And so um, I came away encouraged a little bit by that quarterback position. Levante Schultz might, Chenault might have had the best play by an offensive player. He had kind of, uh, you know, made a, made a tough catch one-handed and made a, a play up field. Any guys on offense that, that stood out to you? Well, it was really – I thought Levante and Dimitri both were really good uh, catching passes um, across the middle uh, for Dimitri. Uh, Levante, like you mentioned, had the one-handed catch. I thought those two guys – you know, I asked Terrell about this. I mean, they just – they showed that they're kind of veteran guys that have played a little bit. And they're, they're still young. I mean, I think they're still technically sophomores, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Levante might actually technically be a freshman. He's a redshirt freshman, yeah. Yeah, redshirt freshman. Um, you know, Dimitri's technically going to be a sophomore. So they're young, but um, I thought they – uh, stepped up and showed why they're kind of, uh, to me, the leaders of that receiver group. Uh, Carl Drell wasn't quite ready to call them leaders of the group yet, uh, but he said that they that they can get there. So um, it was kind of those guys. Uh, I mean, I thought Caleb for you. I still love Caleb, you know, after the catch. I mean, both times he caught the ball after the catch, he's gaining yards. That kid's going to be fun to watch. I mean, I think I can't wait to see him as a sophomore and junior just to see, you know, what he's doing. But um, really, I thought uh, – I, I don't know if there was a star on offense, but if there was, uh, for me, maybe it was Brendan Lewis and just the way he bounced back from what we've seen, a couple of tough scrimmages, and played really well today. I was asked a, a few times, why is CU doing this at 9 a.m. on a Friday? It's because they're going into finals now. And uh, Carl Durrell said, hey, these players – are going to get a month off uh, after what they've dealt with the last 13 months. They didn't get a ton of time off this winter before they had to get back in with Shannon Turley. So a uh, well-deserved break for these guys. Uh, it was great seeing you uh, in, in person here uh, a few times this spring. Uh, there's going to be attrition, Brian, here going forward. Yeah. So that, that's going to be something 
you, you know, again, I think people are confused. Wait, they have scholarships to give Matt Lynch and Curtis Appleton. Well, you know, I think Carl Durrell in a tactful way is going to kind of treat this like an NFL team in a certain sense. Like if you're dead weight on this roster, we got to fill those spots with guys that can play because depth has been an issue in this program for so long. And that's, I think probably his key directive here these next few months, right? Yeah, it has to be. I mean, there's, there's certain spots that, uh, I mean, that's one of the things he's come in here to do is uh, get this program going again. And that's one thing is to clean up the roster uh, and get some guys in there that can compete. And uh, if there's players that are here that have been here for three, four years and they're still not contributing, okay, now it's maybe time to move on. And I, I think CU's uh, general philosophy is if you've got your degree, that's important. Let's get that, <laughs> let's, have, let's sort of get that degree out of the way. And then once you've done that, you know, let's move on. Uh, you know, there might be some guys that don't have that degree yet. And the, the, you just got to be straight up honest with them and say, look, you're not going to have a role on this team. If you want to play college football, it's not going to be at the University of Colorado. Um, and that's where, you know, you mentioned in a tactful way. That's kind of how you do it is you've got to be honest and you've got you to just say, we, you're not in our plans. <laughs> you know, you're not going to play at Colorado. And a lot of guys are going to just move on at that point and say, you know, what? I want to play football. And I don't care if it's Northern Colorado or, uh, you know, Arizona or wherever it is, I, I think I can go play somewhere. And so there's going to be guys that choose to move on and we are going to see some attrition. And, you know, you and I joke about this every year, but uh, you know, people are like, how, how do they have 90, 92 guys on scholarship? They always end up two or three underneath the limit. You know, I think they can have 89 this year. They're going to go into fall camp with 86, 87. You know, I just feel that, that that's just the way things are going to turn out. That tight end group's going to look a lot different when we start previewing preseason camp. Uh, the old line group, I expect to, to be quite a bit different when we see yep. them start preseason practices. Terrence Lyon getting him back on the D-line is going to be huge. The secondary, they were missing a ton of guys. Inside linebacker, you're going to bring in Jake Lamb from Notre Dame. Uh, yeah, there, there's going to be a lot – it's going to be a lot different look when they actually suit up in, in early August for preseason camp. Uh, what are just your thoughts now as this program goes in, into the off season? Uh, like I said, a much deserved break for these guys uh, after what they've dealt with the last 13 and a half months. Yeah. I, I mean, the thought is number one, go enjoy the break, <laughs> take the month off. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure Carl Durrell is wired this way, but I hope he takes some time off and, you know, enjoys a little uh, time with football. I, I'm not sure he's going to yet, but um, you know, take some time off. I know I'm going to take some time off, uh, but, you know, go enjoy it, but then come back. And then like Carl Durrell said, once we get to June, you know, we got to hit it, you know, hard and heavy you know, because then we get into the season. And uh, this program uh, faces, I think, somewhat of a pivotal season. And there's a lot of spots. Uh, for those that watch today, there's a lot of spots you can look a lot different. I think there was uh, three or four inside linebackers uh, that are available today. There was three outside linebackers. <laughs> those numbers are going to be a lot different in the fall. Uh, we hope that, uh, you know, I think this is, you know, just a general hope around the world that, you know, COVID is not such an issue that, you know, that, you know, we're talking about positive tests knocking out a position group, you know, for a week or so. We hope that's not an issue in the fall, but, um, you know, this team's going to look a lot different. Yeah. In June, yeah, if these coaches are going to take some time off, it's got to be here in May because June is going to be a crazy recruiting month for, yep. for this staff. They've already got 18 scheduled official visitors. The recruiting dead period is going to end at the end of next month. They're going to host some camps. They're going to be allowed to do some satellite camps. So it's going to be uh, crazy with recruiting in June. Obviously, the players will come back, uh, get started with Shannon Turley there. Thanks to Carl Drell for letting us in for three, three spring practices. It'd be great if he allows us to do that again in preseason camp. Again, I don't it's not like we gave away any state secrets, right? I mean, it's just general observations and it allows fans to get a little bit more of a glimpse into the program, hopefully. Uh, it was cool that Curtis Snyder got a shout out there on, on the Pac-12 network today and yeah. pray for his continued re recovery. Uh, thanks to David Platty and Alex French for all the work they did in the SID department. It's, it's been a, a tough, tough time and, and those guys have really helped us out. Yeah, Seth Pringle as well, uh, you know, helping yeah, us out yeah. a lot today. So, uh, yeah, those guys doing a lot of work for us. And, um, you know, honestly, I thought CU did a great job, you know, their sports information staff. And, you know, we don't work for CU or anything, but uh, we have to work through those guys. And um, I thought they did a great job for us this spring. Um, you know, they had players lined up for us every day. 
I, I would have to look around the Pac-12. I'm not sure how many programs got to talk to as, uh, as many people as we got to talk to this spring and get a chance to get to know some of these guys. So they did a great job for us, and uh, I expect, hopefully, or I'm hoping for the same in the fall. What's uh, on the itinerary for you? You mentioned uh, that you're going to get a little time off here. Anything exciting or just kind of relaxing at home? Well, it's uh, getting ready. My, my oldest is uh, graduating from high school this spring and he's got a birthday like uh, two days before graduation turns 18. So um, that's going to be on the agenda, you know, over the next month is getting ready for that graduation and getting the kids through school. Basically. I know you got the same uh, issue. Let's just finish off this school year. Yep. Well, I know my, my grill is going to get fired up here quite often now that the, the weather's nicer and looking forward to doing some races, uh, doing a 5k tomorrow. That's going to be a, a shock to the, the system, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it, it, it's good. It, it felt like we are slowly getting back, like you said, to some sense of normalcy. And so I, I hope everybody out there enjoyed these analysis videos. Of course, we'll be back before they start camp. We'll, we'll get some more analysis going during the off season. Thanks, Brian. And uh, thanks to all of you.